One of the main fears of e-mountain bikers, or indeed anybody thinking about buying an e-mountain bike, is actually battery range. How much you can actually get in terms of distance from that little unit just down by there. And it's affected by so many things, no more so than mode or level of assist, commonly known as eco trail or boost. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at the effect of mode on battery range. So today we are gonna be riding the same track and adjusting the mode level to see what effect that has on the battery use. Uh, we've got two bikes. Uh, one is a high bike and the other one is a specialized, both 180 mil travel. And during the day, we'll probably see how, say, eco mode in this bike will probably use different amounts of battery to eco mode in that bike. Uh, more than that, and it's something we'll touch on later, is how you can adjust the levels of assist on each bike as well. The bikes we're riding are enduro style e-mountain bikes. They're the kind of bikes you're gonna take on those big long rides where battery range anxiety might come into play. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Now, in terms of the assistance levels on each of these bikes, uh, I'm riding a Yamaha powered high bike here. And it's got five levels of assistance on it. It's got Eco Plus, Eco Standard, High, and Extra Power Mode. Now, this bike actually has come in standard factory settings and you cannot adjust it, which is actually quite different to Chris's bike, which you can adjust. But Chris is riding his in factory settings as well. Isn't that right, Yeah, Chris? factory settings, got three power modes on this. We've got an Eco setting, a Trail, and a Turbo Boost button as well. So three different settings, which can be adjusted by the mission control on the app on your mobile. Yeah, but we're gonna go into that a little bit later on. We're gonna start this ride and we're both gonna be in low powered modes. I'm gonna be in Eco Plus and Chris is gonna be in Eco. So the trail we're riding today is about six miles and 800 feet of climbing. Uh, the conditions are actually quite rough. So you might wanna take that into account when you see our results later on in the day. And because me and Chris actually will use a certain amount of battery consumption, you shouldn't take that for granted because like I said, such things as the trail condition, the weather conditions, the rider weight, the tire choice, the tire pressures, all those things will have an effect on your battery range, but at least we will see what's achievable in each of the modes. Exactly that, it's a great example of a typical trail ride. Now, even though I'm riding in the lowest level of support on this bike, it's easy to forget just how much support that motor has given you. And you really have to concentrate on keeping the momentum going to make sure you don't lose fitness. In fact, I actually like using a heart rate monitor to keep an eye on my effort levels. But how's that battery doing? Now Jones might be an Eco Plus on the Yamaha motor, which arguably might be a little bit less assistance than I'm riding on the Bros motor on the Kinevo. But hopefully both gonna use minimal battery power and they're a lot more fun than an antique bike, that's for sure. Now, one of the cool things about the Yamaha PWX system is it's got a display which shows your battery uh, level. So we're halfway around this route and I'm down to 93%, so 7% usage so far, I've got plenty in the tank. But the good thing about it is, is that it's really quite uh, detailed so that you can really fine tune your e-bike ride. Versus a Kinevo, which actually is quite stealth on the handlebars, you've just got a visual indicator on the side of the down tube, which basically tells you how much battery is left in the actual system. How, but, how much actually have you got left? I've used one bar actually out of 10, so it's been pretty good, but we have been in eco the whole way. But with this bike, you can get a third party device which will mount on the handlebars and will give you loads of information from your heart rate to your route to your cadence, every single thing. Probably more options than what the Yamaha have. Didn't you tell me earlier that you can actually have that Levo or the Kinevo tuned into your watch? Yeah. So you can actually change the, yeah, yeah. You can change the mode level yeah. on, on your wrist? Yeah, yeah, with the Garmin and uh, different devices like the Apple Watch and that, you can actually scroll through and change settings on the bike via your watch, so it's super clever.
Uh, it's worth pointing out that even though this route is six miles long, that's not six miles of continuous battery use. Um, that's because a lot of the terrain we're going to be pumping down through some sections and there's a lot of downhill sections, so don't take it as it's six miles of battery use. Also, we're going to bear in mind is that uh, because we're in Eco and Eco Plus mode, we're easily able to keep under that 25 kilometers an hour restriction. So, uh, like if you do, if you go beyond that, that means you're going to be using your own power, which can of affects the ride really so I think when we get around to riding in our um, turbo and um, high power mode on this bike we need to be really careful that we keep under that 25k yeah. wow Chris what a what a day out Amazing, question for it? you though do you think that eco mode is one of the most underrated aspects of e-mountain biking 100% I think as you ride in in turbo mode, you're actually getting desensitized to the whole speed and like the feeling, you know, when you go from eco into turbo, you get that sudden surge and you're like, whoa, this is amazing. Yeah. I think if you're riding in that, it just becomes the norm. Yeah. And I think you're just missing out on so much more riding. You could be doing an eco, a little blast in turbo. Yeah, I think more people need to fall back in love with eco mode. Definitely. Now we've completed our first, albeit short, six mile trail center loop. Uh, if you remember, I started on 100% uh, in Eco Plus mode. I'm now in 91% uh, charge level on my bike, which is actually very, very little considering the amount of riding we've done in the last half an hour. Chris, what's the scores on well, the Kinevo With doors? the Kinevo, I started on 97% and I've actually finished this on 78%, so I've used 19 percent of right. my battery so, so that's pretty almost double what i've used yeah, yeah. so but that, that's quite interesting so mm. uh, there you can see how the modes differ not just um within a bike but actually between bikes too of course this is eco plus and chris is in eco time now then to go and hit that loop again uh, i'm going to be in extra power and chris is going to be in turbo turbo mode engaged now, earlier on, I mentioned how you can alter the amount of assistance each mode gives you. Uh, now, on the Yamaha-powered bike, you can't actually change the amount of assistance in each mode, and likewise on the Bosch bike as well. However, on the Shimano E7000, E8000 bikes, you can actually change the amount of support in each of the modes via the E2 BAPs. For, so for example, you ride an Eco, you can either, either have a lot of support in Eco or very little support in Eco. So that, again, is gonna change the amount of use or the amount of draw you pull on your battery. And it's the same on Chris's bike. On the uh, specialized bikes, you've got mission control. And again, you can go into the app and you can fine tune uh, the amount of assistance that bike is giving you. Oh, you can see why people get consumed by the higher power settings, because the pace difference between the first run is absolutely ludicrous. Whoa! It really is addictive though, but you forget just how fast you go on extra power mode. We're averaging about 22 kilometers an hour on this loop. Highly addictive and an insane amount of fun. However, that comes at a high price, Chris. Definitely, yeah. I used 30% of battery on that one run then. Wow, that's a lot, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's in, uh, in turbo mode on Chris's bike. Yeah. Uh, I was in extra power mode on the uh, Yamaha powered uh, high bike. Uh, like I said, 25% battery use on that run alone, compared to say 9%, which I used on the first run. And if you think about it, that 9% on the first run, I could have actually done on a 30 minute loop, I could have done 10 loops. Whoa, it was massive. And that limits, is, yeah. that's five hours of riding, but which that, is pretty yeah. crazy. I suppose it comes down to how much time you've actually got to ride. You know, if you were mm. to turn up here and you've only got an hour, then I would smash it in turbo, do a couple of laps and go home. Exactly, but you know, like I used 25% then, I could have done four uh, 30 minute loops, exactly. probably like, you know, about two and a half thousand foot of climbing, yeah. 24 miles. Pretty that's impressive not numbers. bad, is it? 
Pretty good. So there you go. Uh, guys, let us know what you think about um, battery usage on your e-mountain bikes. Uh, remember, it, it differs between all the mountain bikes. Uh, Chris's bike got, got a different amount of torque compared to my mountain bike, and say if you compare it to a Shimano bike as well. Uh, yeah, let's say, let us know your comments. If you've got any questions relating to e-bike battery usage. In the meantime, check out Chris's video where he did his 100K the fun way. Uh, and also we've got one on tires. Remember tires have an effect on battery range as well. And there's one here which looks at the effect of tire compound on battery range. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop us some comments in the box below and click the globe in the middle of us to subscribe to EMBN. Bake and roll. <laughs>